So, hello everyone. I'm Tarika Madhura Peruma, a senior software engineer from WSO2. So, first of all, let me tell you the purpose of this workshop. Today, we're going to see how we can set up a CI/CD pipeline for deploying your open API specification as a managed API in the shortest possible time. So why do you really need to convert your open API specification into a managed API? Let me tell you by starting from the problem that we have. So assume that there is a company who has a backend services implementation, say you're written in Spring Boot, ExpressJS, or Flask, or any other backend framework of their choice. And now, the problem that they have is how can they expose their API or this backend services implementation to the outside world for them to consume? For this, the consumers need to know the specifics of the service that this company has to offer. So this is where we need an open API specification. So what is an open API specification or an OAS? It is a standard format for describing and documenting RESTful APIs. So it is basically an interface to your backend API. So now this company has a backend services implementation and an open API specification. So will this solve their problem? Now, what is their problem? The problem is they want to know how they can expose their backend services implementation to the outside world for consumption. So it is true that they have an open API specification, which is an interface to their backend. But what other problems lie ahead? Let's see. So in the normal business world, the clients or consumers, they access the API over the network. So they need a common gateway URL for that. So when you expose this URL, then you need to think how can they uh, directly access this URL. So what are the security um, aspects and what are the controls that you need to impose? And are you going to give them the option to try your API out? And how to provide human readable guidance for consumers of the API? For that, you need documentation. Then you also need an output, a store, a developer portal for your consumers to discover your API. So all this cannot be done by a single, uh, by having an open API specification only. So the solution will be API management. So a managed API has a life cycle. It has everything from creating to securing, documenting, testing, then versioning, publishing, promoting, monetizing, retiring, as well as managing and observing the usage of APIs. So almost all the API management platforms, including AWS to API Manager, provides you with first-class support for managed APIs. So WS2 API Manager is a complete platform for building, integrating, and exposing your digital services as managed APIs. So in WS2 API Manager, it provides you with tools such as the API controller and integration studio, which will provide the developer an, um, a good experience, a user-friendly experience. So now, when considering the previous company that we discussed about, now they, with this, with platforms like API Manager and other uh, API Manager platforms, now the issue is solved, right? But, so the, uh, the problem that they actually had was how to expose their backend services implementation to the outside world for consumption. So these API Manager platforms allow you to expose them as managed APIs. But in the real world, you rarely get a single API for a company, right? So with increased scale, it becomes more preferable to have automation into these processes. So wouldn't it be better if you have, if a company can have a scenario like this automated? For example, once their backend API is deployed, an open API specification is auto-generated. And then tests are also auto-generated based on a specific, uh, say, platform. And then based on a predefined set of configurations such as security and visibility which are specific to their organization an api project 
will get auto generate. And then this API project is deployed into the API management environment. And then the previously, previously auto generated tests will then run on this deployed environment. So to make sure that everything works fine. So when you consider the first step here, uh, the auto generating part of the open API specification, we can actually do this with tools uh, which are specific to the backend uh, framework. And then auto generation of tests can also be done through frameworks like Postman collections. And when then what about the other three steps, starting from auto generating the API project to deploying and then running tests? Doubles to API manager, can it help here? We'll see. Yes. So WS2 API Manager can have, it, it has a tool called WS2 API Controller, which is a command line tool that can help you with a seamless automation. So that is with the existing um, commands and controls in the API Controller, you can really uh, execute certain commands and then make sure that this CI-CD process works smoothly. So now I'll move on to a short demo to show how API Manager can do this. Okay, so here, I think you can see, this is the API Manager server, uh, WS2 API Manager server, which is running in my local machine. So uh, this is where we are going to uh, deploy our open API specification as a managed API. And then I told you before that API CTL is a, a command line tool. So this API CTL or API controller has to be installed locally in your machine. So I have installed it already in my machine. So now I'm going to use this API CTL to uh, generate a, a managed API in WS2 API Manager. So here you can see that I have uh, an open API specification called Petsto API, which is already available here. And now I'm going to convert this open API specification into an API project. And then this API project will be deployed in WS2 API Manager server, which is running in my local machine. So first of all, this I'm going to run this command, which is adding an environment. In API controller, what this really does is this, this will point API controller to the API management uh, server that we already have. So this is where my API manager server is running in my local machine in port 9443. So then adding an environment means the API controller knows where your API management server is running. So I'm going to add an environment called dev here. So that is the name that I give to my environment. And then I'm going to add this as an environment. Now you can see that this environment is successfully created. I will show you that API CT has another command called get environments to show you what environments are already added. So you can see that dev environment is already here pointing to my local API manager server. Now we are going to log in to this dev environment like this. So I had to give my username and password. And you can see that we successfully log in to the dev environment. And then we can use our open API specification which is available here to generate an API project first. So this is the command that I'm going to use for that. If you can, see, if you see this command, it is called API controller init. So here I'm going to provide the path to where I need my project or API project to be created from the open API specification. And this flag over here, that is OAS, it will show so this is, this is where I point my uh, open API specification with the flag uh, double dash OAS. And here, this double dash definition is an optional uh, flag where we can provide a template file for your API project. For example, I will show you the definition file that I'm giving. Now, this is the place where you can define certain controls like visibility, uh, the lifecycle status, Etc., and even the policy is security for your API. So, this is an optional part where you can give the definition. So, now I'm going to execute this command to create my API project. Now, here you can see the project is initialized in this 
direct. We see, see here, you can see that um, Swagger Pet Store is the project that I created. And this is a new project that's created from API init command. Now I will show you what are the different uh, directories that are available inside. Now here, this client certificate is a directory that we can store uh, certificate information, such as mutual SSL related certificates for your API, if there are any. Then in the definitions directory, we are going to save the Swagger YAML. So this is auto-generated from the uh, open API specification that we provide. Then we have the docs directory where we can uh, store the documentation related to our API. Then this image directory can be used to store things like the thumbnail image, etc. Then these interceptors and lips are two folders, which is used for API micro gateway related uh, things. Then sequences is a folder that we are, you can uh, store sequences, like for sequences, in sequences, and out sequences for your API. And then you see there are three different uh, files here. One is the API MetaYAML and the other is the API YAML. So this API YAML is very similar to the definition YAML that you saw before. So this is the file that is auto-generated from this definition YAML. And then we have another file called deployment environments YAML where this one is a new addition to the API controller where with the with revisions in that is in uh, API Manager version 4.0.0, we have a new feature called revisions. So this deployment environments will, uh, so this file is used for that, um, yeah. that kind of revision. So then now I'm going to do something that is after generating an, an API project, we can change different aspects. Like for example, I can add an image or a thumbnail image to my API project. So for example, here I'm going to add one um, um, thumbnail image. So let me see. Now this is the thumbnail image that I'm going to add in. For my pet store API, it will be this one. So this I'm going to copy and paste it under the image directory. So then it will be added as a thumbnail image for my API when it's being deployed in W3 API Manager. And then I can do any changes that I need here in this API YAML. And now what I have to do is uh, to now, this is importing the project to the API Manage Sub. Now, this is the command that I'm going to use for that. Here, you can see it's an import API command where I'm pointing to the Swagger Pet Store API project that I created in the first step. And then I have to point the correct environment, the dev environment that I added before, so that this API will get uh, added. So, this is how it will. Um, See, now you can see from this side, now this is the server I told you that will be uh, my API manager server running locally. So you can see some logs here. So this shows that the API is imported successfully to the API manager server. Now I'm going to log in back to this. Uh, now this is the location for my uh, local API manager publisher portal. And I'm going to log in there. And you will be able to see my API here, which is already created, right? So your open API specification, that is my pet store YAML here, is now uh, imported and deployed successfully in an API management platform as a managed API. So this is how it goes. So then uh, there's another command that you can use with API controller, because now if I go back to the presentation, here I showed you another step called running test. So we already did this auto-generating API project and auto-deploying the API using the API CTL commands. And the next one, which is there, is the running test part. So for running test means you have to invoke your API, which is deployed in your API management environment. So then uh, you, you can make sure that your API is working fine. So for this also, WS2 API controller provides support. How? It helps you to generate access tokens for an API because in API manager, by default, APIs are secure with auth authentication. So this using this command by giving the name of the API and the version of the API together with the environment, you can generate uh, an access token. So this generated access token can then be used in your tests to invoke and see to invoke the API. So this is how WS3 API manager controller helps out with automating this section. So now I'll move back to the presentation. 
here you can see in managers um, official documentation you can see a whole list of commands that you can use with api controller in a similar manner okay so now when uh, when there are multiple developers, multiple APIs, and multiple environments such as staging, dev, and prod, uh, then when you have to manage this at the same time, it becomes a bit more complicated. But API controller helps you to move your APIs, API projects, or products and applications across these different environments such as development, testing, and production so that you can also it also adheres to the different configuration changes that are re, that are required for these different environments for example if you say you have one api and you need to deploy this api in the development environment but the backend endpoint url for your api in the dev environment has to be different than the backend endpoint url in the production environment so this api controller actually helps you to define these two uh, different URLs uh, related to your API project. So then it is really easy to do a CI CD process with API controller. So now I will move on to the main demonstration for the day. So here I'm going to show you how we can uh, set up or configure a Git based CI CD pipeline for you. Uh, so that then this, when you have an API, you can uh, quickly uh, with, with a very less amount of time, you can change this into a managed API across environments. So here also you will see some, you will explore some more capabilities of the API controller with WS2 API Manager. Okay, so this is our main use case. Now we have a backend implementation uh, for an online store. And this uh, backend has uh, the capability of um, doing Three uh, giving out three services. One is to uh, get the list of products, and the other is to add a new product, and the third one will be to uh, retrieve a specific API. Then, for this backend URL, we have an Open API specification already. So, what we really need to do is to deploy this Open API specification in a WS2 API Manager environment. So then we also have two different or separate environments called the development environment and the prod environment. So here, when, an when your API is deployed in your dev environment, we'll be running test cases on it, and then we'll be uh, pushing it to the production environment. Actually, this automating part of pushing your API from dev to prod can be customized according to your need. So in this demonstration, I'm using uh, the API that is deployed in the dev environment will be pushed to production if the tests are successful. So this is the setup that we have come up in order to achieve our use case above. So here in uh, WS2 API controller, we have a new feature called Git integration. So we are going to use that feature in this uh, setup. So here you can see there are uh, two GitHub repositories. One is the source repository and the other one is the deployment repository. So this source repository is where we store the API projects. So if you can remember in the previous demonstration, I showed you that using an open API specification, we can generate an API project using the API control. So this source repository uh, is storing all those API projects. And then we have another repository called deployment repository. So this deployment repository contains the environment specific configurations for a particular API. For example, for this deployment repository will contain uh, environment specific information like the endpoint URL, the certificates for the dev environment and the prod environment separately. And now, then in the source repository, we have configured a webhook. So this, what this webhook will do is once a developer commits the source to the source repository, this webhook will trigger a Jenkins pipeline. So this Jenkins pipeline, what it does is it will build the uh, source repository, that is, it will build the API projects and then upload it to the artifact repository. So then this artifact repository also has a webhook configured. So then with a push event to the artifact repository, another Jenkins pipeline will get triggered. So this, what this Jenkins pipeline will do is 
it will download the artifacts from the artifact repository and then also pick uh, the uh, configurations or there is environment specific configurations from the deployment repository and then it will deploy the api into the development environment then again after deployment it will run tests on it and after these tests are successful the same jenkins pipeline will deploy this uh, the api into the production environment so this is what we are going to demonstrate now so before that these are the things that we need to set up so in this demonstration what i have used for the dev and the prod environment setup is I have used an AWS EC2 instance, a single instance, to uh, host both my development environment and the production environment. So the dev environment and for, for the dev environment and the production environment, I'm using WS2 API Manager version 4.0.0. So they are in a, a, a port offset, so because they are running the same instance. And then I have set up a source repository and a deployment repository. And then we have Jenkins pipeline. Here I have another AWS EC2 instance uh, to host my Jenkins server. Here I have configured two pipelines, one pipeline on push event to the source repository. It will upload the built artifacts to the artifact repository. Then pipeline two on upload event to the artifact repository, it will download the artifacts, deploy to the dev environment, runs the tests on the dev environment and deploy the artifacts back to production and then for the artifact repository if you can remember in the setup we had an artifact repository for that i'm using jfrog artifactory uh, for this demonstration yeah. if you want to try it out you can use the jfrog artifactory and create a free account and use that as your artifact repository so now uh, i told you that we are going to run tests on the development environment for this setting up this test is easy where you can use a postman collection now, uh, what you actually have at the first place is the open API specification. So what you can do is you can import your open API specification to this Postman collection and write tests on it using Postman. And then when you export it, what you get is a JSON file. So this API test JSON uh, is that JSON file. And for this demonstration, I have used a separate folder called tests where I store these uh, scripts, these JSON files. Plus, there's an additional script that I'm going to uh, put for each API, that is test.sh. So the content that you see down here is uh, the content of the test.sh file. So what it does is, now I told you before that API manager, API controller has the capability to, in, uh, to generate a key for your API. So this is the command that is used for that. We can say API CTL get keys, and you have to give the API name, version, and the environment. So I'm going. So this will generate a token. Then I'm using Newman, which is a command line tool for Postman collections, running Postman collections. So I'm giving the JSON file for this API plus the token as an environment variable. So then this will actually invoke the API, which is deployed in your dev environment. So this is how it happens. Now I'll show you the Git based CI/CD in action. Now this is how it happens. So in, uh, now, you know, assume that I'm a developer in this company. So I'm uh, given the task of creating an API project and then deploying this into the dev environment and the prod environment in a CI/CD manner. So I will show you uh, the uh, uh, open API that I'm going to use. So this store API YAML is the open API specification that I'm going to deploy in the dev and the prod environment. So now, first thing what I'm going to do is, uh, you know that we have uh, we have to keep two uh, uh, that is two uh, GitHub repositories, one source repository and the other is a deployment repository. So then I have already cloned the source repository and the deployment repository. So let me move into the uh, source repository. repository, I'm going to generate an API project from the open API specification that I have. Yeah, I'm in the dev environment. So the command that I'm going to use here is this. So this is the same command that we used before, where I say it's API CTL init, and I give the name for my API project, 
and give the open the, the path to my open API specification, which is store API YAML. So now I'm going to initialize that. So here you can see the project is initialized. And if I go to this, uh, my VS code, you can see the online store API generated inside my source repository, right? So here, this has the same structure as before. Now what we have to do is, now I'm going to do some changes to this, uh, 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 my project. Uh, similar to the previous project, I'm going to copy uh, uh, a thumbnail image for my API. So the thumbnail image that I'm going to use here is uh, a store thumbnail. Now I'm going to copy that over here into the image directory like this. And I also can do some changes here. Now I'm going to uh, change this to the published state, state because I want my API to be uh, initialized in the published state itself so that the, in the developer portal, you can see this API for others to consume. So uh, let me do some changes, like I can change the uh, description here, etc. And now, okay. So, uh, and there's another additional file that I'm going to add here, which is called the meta.yaml file. So now let me create that here. Now I'll tell you why we are using this, meta.yaml. So in this meta.yaml file, I'm going to add something called the version 100. So you know that we are using an artifact tree, right? So we are going to upload our uh, built artifacts to that artifactory repository. Uh, in that case, since it is easier, if you can maintain these inversions, I'm going to use this version to store my uh, my API project, the built repository as a version. So MetaYAML is actually used for the artifact repository. And now we are done with setting up our uh, source repo. So, and I told you before that for a source repository, that is for, for an API project, you can um, create a deployment repo, uh, deployment uh, folder. That is, using this command, I'll, I'll uh, create another one using this command. So this is the command to create a deployment directory for your API, API project. While in the same source repo, I can execute this one. So what happens here is it will generate a deployment directory for uh, API project. So this deployment directory contains the environment specific configurations. So let me uh, first execute this command. So in this command, uh, you can see what happens is we have the uh, online store. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm giving part of the source file and I'm giving the path to the destination, which is my deployment repository. Right? So if you go back to my VS code, you can see in my deployment directory, there's a new uh, project that's been created. So here, we can uh, store certificates and parameters and different uh, things for the API project, specific to the API project. If you go to this params file, this is where we can define the different endpoint URLs that you need for your API. Uh, for different environments. For example, now I'm going to change this param YAML like this. I have a template. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to copy that and change this. Here for the dev environment, I have used a different production URL, which is a mock backend. And for the production endpoint, I'm, I have used the actual production backend URL. So this is what I'm going to so that is, if when de deploying my API in the dev environment, I want my API to have this URL. And when deploying my API in the prod environment, I want my API to have this URL. Okay, so now I have done these changes. Uh, say, I'm changing this URL a little bit. And now, first of all, what you have to do is you have to upload, uh, that is, you have to commit the changes to your deployment repository. Now, you know that the de deployment repository doesn't have a webhook configured, so you have to do that first, that is committing the deployment repository. So now I'm going to go back to my deployment repository, cd into my deployment repository like this. It's created. You can see we can, I have changed this. Uh, we'll add the file first. Then let's commit with a, uh, let's say it's saying add, 
add a new change. Then it's easier for us to see this in the Jenkins job. Okay. And now I'm going to push it. So this deployment, so the changes are committed now to the deployment repository. Now the next thing that we have to do is, I'm going to commit, uh, go back to the my source repository and then commit it to the source. Now this is where the Jenkins job triggers. I'm going back to my source repository, and uh, you saw that I did some changes to my API project. If I do with status, you can see this is changed. So I'm going to hit add. Uh, with with a commit, let's say add a new change. Okay, so I'm going to push this. Before pushing this, I will show you the Jenkins job that I have created. I'm going to push this to original dev environment. Okay. Here, I will show you my Jenkins instance. In this one here, you can see there are two uh, Jenkins pipelines that are already created. Here, the CICD dev is the Jenkins pipeline that will load the API artifacts to the artifact repository. Then this deploy pipeline is the one that will, up, that will download the API artifacts. It will deploy the API into dev and the prod environments and also run the tests. So now when I upload, that is when I commit to my source repository, these, these Jenkins jobs should get, uh, so these Jenkins jobs have to uh, trigger. So here I'm uh, now you, in this queue, you might be able to see here this build queue. So this job is queued. So this is the first pipeline, CICD dev. Here you can see that it's triggered. And then after this gets completed, the CICD deploy pipeline will come up. So here you can see. So it's getting triggered. So one, while it's getting triggered, I'm go, going into CICD dev environment. So this is the uh, last build. That is the build that we just did. So here you can see the latest commit. It has picked the latest commit. And then the console output will be like this. Here you can see uh, from the source repository, a new API artifact is generated. And it is co correctly being uploaded into so yeah, it's uploading to the artifact. OK, so now let's go back to the other development environment. That is this one. Here, what happened? What has happened is so this is the last build. It has correctly picked the changes that we did. And if you go to the console output, you can see that from the artifactory, the online store, that is this my build artifact, is downloaded properly. And then we have logged into the API manager dev environment. And this API is correctly imported to the development environment. After that, here you can see these new tests are getting run. So this is how So I have written three test cases for my three resources. And they have passed. After that, I'm going to log in to this prod environment. Then in the production environment, you can see that this API has successfully imported. So now I'll log in to my dev environment to show you uh, how these APIs have been successfully deployed. So this is uh, the port 9443 is for my dev environment. So if you log into that, and this is the publisher portal, uh, here you can see my uh, API in the dev environment. So I'll show you the endpoints that are there in this environment. So then you know that our deployment environment specific configurations have been correctly applied. If you go inside, now this API is deployed correctly. And if you, if you go inside this API and go to the endpoint section, you can see the, this is the endpoint that I created, that I configured in my params YAML file, if you can remember. So it's correctly in the dev environment. And now I'll log in to my production environment to show you 
how the endpoint is there. So this, my, in my production environment, uh, my API, my IP uh, this uh, port is 944 with a port offset. So in this uh, API, which is there in the production environment, the endpoint has to be correctly uh, changed. So let, let me log into this environment and show you that. Okay, also you can see uh, my API. Uh, let it load. Um, so when you log in, you can see that the deployed API in this environment. Okay, so in this API, if you go to the endpoint section, you will see this endpoint, so which is correctly uh, added, taken from the ParamSAML and the API, which is the end production environment has correctly taken the uh, required endpoint. Okay, so now, uh, now the question is what will happen if I do a breaking change? So assume I do an accidental change to my source repository. So, so the ideal uh, scenario is if it's a breaking change where the tests fail, then what should happen is um, the changes should not get pushed to the production environment. So let, let's see whether that actually happens. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, now I already have my online store uh, project here locally. I'm going to do a change to my Swagger file. In the Swagger file, I'm, I will do an accidental change that is removing this S from my resource, from product resource. So I'm going to commit this now. Uh, commit this from my source repository. If I do a git status, let's see my swagger is uh, changed. I'm going to add it. Now, this is a breaking change, so this should stop at the testing phase. Uh, let's say breaking change. Now I'm going to push it. Right, now if you go back to the Jenkins dashboard, you will see another build getting triggered here from the CSED dev. Here you can see the build queue. So then if you go into the build queue, this will happen correctly. So this is the, the last build that came after the breaking chain. If you go to the console output, you can see the upload event has properly happened. This has uploaded. And now let's, if you go back to uh, the deploy pipeline, now this is still running. Here you can see that it has failed in the running test phase. If you go to the console output, you will see uh, the artifact is correctly downloaded and then it is deployed to the dev environment. And now, then now the new tests have run. Here you can see the tests have failed. Why? Because this product, there's there's no uh, resource called product now, products now, so it's only product. So it's a breaking change, so the test has failed. Now it has tried to log into uh, the uh, production environment, so this stage has not been properly carried out. Now let's see whether that's the correct case. I'm going to log back into my dev environment. And in this dev environment, the resources of this API should have changed to the breaking change in the dev environment. So if you log in there, and if I go back to resources, I will have to log in back. Okay, I'll show you this. Um, so if you go in under resources tab, you will see the changed API. So the development environment has actually broken. So say resources, here you can see the uh, our API has changed. Now, if you if I log back into my production environment and go back to the resources, it shouldn't be there. That is, it should have the previous resource. Okay, let's see. If you go in, under the resource tab, under resources, you can see here you have the previous 
production resource. So the production environment hasn't broken because of the test failure. Only the development environment has got the change. So that is how it happens. Now I'll move back to my presentation. So you can see how the Gitbay CS can be done pretty easily with our uh, WSJ API controller. So before uh, wrapping things up, uh, let me just briefly tell you the evolution of WS3 API controller. So here, what we initially had was an APM CLI. It's not the API CTL, but APM CLI. So this is compatible with API Manager version 2.6. It requires a separate import-export WAR file deployed in API Manager. And of course, CI CD is also possible with APM CLI. And then for the 3x versions of WS3 API Manager, uh, the Compatible version for 3.0x API CTL is API Manager 3.0. So the feature highlights are the, uh, the ability to generate access tokens to invoke APIs and containerized environment support is also provided with API CTL 3.0. Then for API Manager, uh, API CTL 3.1, API Manager 3.1.0 is compatible. And the added features are, uh, it allows you to change API lifecycle, delete APIs or applications, and do enhancements for containerized environment support. Then API CTL 3.2x is compatible with API Manager version 3.2. So this is where we actually get this Git integration support. And also, uh, it's, uh, this API CTL supports API products from 3.2 onwards. Then for this demonstration, what I used is API CTL 4.0. Uh, and this is compatible with API Manager 4.0.0. So the feature highlights are, it also has this Git integration with source and uh, source repository and the deployment repository. Plus there are a lot of major changes that happen in API controller for zero versions. So this actually uh, uh, makes uh, takes our workshop to a conclusion. So I would like to invite all of you to uh, explore and try out the capabilities that API controller has so that you can easily convert your open API specification into a managed API in the shortest possible time. So I would like to um, ask you to uh, come on and ask questions from me. I I'm happy to answer them. If there are any questions, please let me know. Yes, so there's one question saying, uh, asking whether WST API control is open source. Yes, it's open source. Uh, do you have any other questions? So uh, we actually have a Slack channel uh, which you can join so that all our developers are there. So you can ask whatever the questions that you have. So then we are really happy to answer. Okay. All right. So there's another question. How can we get its downloadable links and readme.txt, etc. files, ma'am? So this is regarding the API control, I believe. So if you go to, uh, um, I can share you the link. This is actually called APM, uh, product APM tooling. If you go to our GitHub repositories, which are open source. Uh, maybe I can share the links, the link with you. So the readmes and everything are there. You can try it out. It, it's available for download as well. So let me share uh, it with you. This one. Okay, I'll uh, share the link in the chat. Okay, so we have some more questions in the chat as well. Okay. Uh, one question is, how about uh, class mediators, JAWS or JS file? So, Deva uh, Sundaram, what do you really mean by that is, uh, you mean the these files in the API project folder or, um, anything else uh, so maybe a class maybe it's for in the api project 
I, I showed you that we are going to add documentation and uh, sequences also, right? So for that, um, there's a, a particular uh, folder called libs folder and the intercept folder that is actually used for micro gateway pur purposes. And these JS files and class mediators, uh, class mediator DAS uh, also, um, it should be possible. Um, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, I hope, I think you can put that in the libs directory as I showed you in, before in the API project folder. Okay, so the uh, next question is, do you have this sample code in GitHub? Yes, it's there in GitHub. I will uh, share the link in the presentation. It's there in the presentation slides. Uh, then uh, the next question is, do we need to have API CTL installed in Jenkins server as well? Of course, you have to have API CTL because uh, we are uh, running the API controller commands from the Jenkins as well in the pipeline. So you definitely have to have that installed in it. And then do we have to create two repos for each API? What if we have more APIs available? Two repos for each, no. Uh, so this is actually for the source repository. You can have multiple APIs in it. So the source repository means all the repository which contains all the API projects and the deployment repository contains all the, uh, the deployment related in, uh, information per project. So there's a specific naming convention that you have to adhere to if it's the CI CD process that you really uh, want to look into. So uh, there for each API, you have a corresponding uh, deployment directory in the deployment repository. So th there will be only two repos and the multiple uh, uh, folders can be there in each repo. And then uh, another question, does this structure you discuss support hybrid API model also? Uh, Yes, so when you say hybrid API model, uh, what did it actually mean, Abhishek? Okay, if you, if you can just elaborate more on that, I'll, I'll be happy to help out. Um, let's see whether we have some more questions. Uh, so uh, where is the channel link to join for developers? So the, that cha the Slack channel link, I will also share you at the end. I have that in my uh, slide deck. And okay, so do we have any more questions? Okay, right. So I'll uh, share my screen again to give the uh, links that you wanted. Uh, here you can see for um, so you can download and try out API Manager from this link, and then you can join our Slack channel from uh, ws2-apimslack.com. Uh, and all our developers are there. They can help you out with uh, your questions. And in API Manager, we also have a blog uh, for called API Integration Essentials in Medium. You can go and access it. It has all the uh, material that you would want to know about our the different features that we have. And API Manager also has a YouTube channel called API Life. Here we uh, post our uh, screen cars are uh, then then we have also have uh, community calls happening monthly so we'll be adding all, all of them into api live youtube channel so the demo material you can access them from this link uh, it, it's in my repository uh, so this is uh, what it has so this uh, presentation slide will be hosted um, i think so then you can access it from that slide as well okay so uh, if you do you have any more questions? Okay, so I'll uh, let me post the links as well, then it will be easier for you. Uh, the I will post the Slack channel link here. And Then this is the link for our YouTube channel, API channel, API Live. And then uh, the demo material links are these two. Okay. Right. So I think we are good to uh, wrap up. So thank you everyone then.
thanks a lot for joining in today. So uh, I think after this, you will have a break, a short break. So um, uh, thank you once again. I invite you to, uh, um, that is, try out our API controller and uh, the different capabilities that API Manager has. So thanks a lot and enjoy the day. And uh, thank you very much. Stay safe.